Would you like some suggestions on how to get every student to love K-6 mathematics? G'day, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Professor Pete's Classroom. Welcome to this fourth video in the series of four, so it's the final video in this series on successful math teaching for grades K-6. to six. So these are six suggestions from me on how to get every student in your class to love mathematics. And of course the goal here is that when they love mathematics they'll do better at it, they'll be more motivated, they'll get better results and everybody will achieve more success. The first one is to fall in love with math yourself. Now if you're like me and you already love math, well you can tick that box and move on to the next suggestion. But if it's not your favourite subject or it's not a subject that you really like or in fact if you dislike it, let me encourage you to find ways to like it. Find ways to love it, find ways to appreciate the value, the beauty, the structure, whatever it is that works for you. But we know that enthusiasm for a subject um, is contagious and when a teacher loves a subject, whatever your favourite subject is, you know the effect. The students appreciate the fact that you like it, you can see the importance. So I think that is uh, really, really important. The second suggestion is simply scaffold everything. Now I've been talking about that in the previous videos. Um, I recommend that you use illustrations and pictures and diagrams and videos and all those sort of things to help the students understand what symbols mean. I'm suggesting that you just use as much scaffolding as is needed. So uh, some adults have the view that, you know, when you're beyond a certain age, you don't need counters and blocks, for example. I would say if you need the blocks to help you understand what the symbols mean, then use the blocks. It doesn't matter, you're not going to get stuck using blocks forever. But if it scaffolds and helps you understand decimal fractions or large numbers or something like that, then, you know, let's use that. The third suggestion, make it easy to follow. Again, I mentioned this in an earlier video, the fact that mathematics learning builds on previous learning. There's always previous prerequisite knowledge that students need. We need to make sure we're going back and catching the students up if necessary to make it as easy to follow as possible. Fourthly, structure lessons so that you can help the strugglers. Now, I'm talking to myself as much as anybody. I've taught lessons to an entire class before and thought, well, I've got to move on. We're falling behind in the textbook. The curriculum has all these other topics we have to cover and so on, and we, we all face those time pressures. Um, but if possible, at every opportunity, and that's the best I can do in my classroom, is find ways to help the strugglers. And the best strategy I've ever come across that I've found some success with is to give an exercise for the majority of the class. So, right, here's some practice exercise. Here's, you know, 10 or 15 or 20 questions on the whiteboard. And those that would like extra help, come with me to the whiteboard, or in the old days it used to be a chalkboard, and I'll help you basically one-on-one -on -one with individuals and help them work through a problem. I found students really like that, and oftentimes they find they actually did know how to do it. They just lack the confidence to get through it. So whatever works for you, but there needs to be some sort of structure in place. Fifthly, get parents to help, not hinder, the students in their learning of mathematics. I believe that parents are basically on your side, most of them, most of them. We know there are difficult parents, of course there are. But if you can get parents to help and deliberately set about to help them understand how you approach the teaching of mathematics, they may never have learned mathematics. Chances are they did not learn mathematics the way you teach it. They didn't know that you were supposed to understand it. They didn't know it was supposed to be connected to real life at every turn and that sort of thing. So if you can generate support from home, I think that's got a powerful effect on the learning of their children, your students. And sixth, sixthly, basically set the goal of success for every student as a non-negotiable in your classroom. So if you set that as a priority for yourself, make sure the students know, make sure that the parents know, the teacher aides know that you have decided that every child should achieve success if possible, then that um, gives a goal for everybody to aim for. It lets everybody know that they're on the same page. And you let students know you're not prepared to let them fall behind. You're not going to leave them by the wayside um, not understanding things. So that's it, six suggestions to get every student in your class to love mathematics and I wish you every success with that. 
I invite you to come to our website profpeat.com where we have thousands of resources plus interactive software that really are examples of the approach that I've been talking about on these videos. They help students to make connections, they help to illustrate the concepts. Every single resource we have on our website is built from the ground up by ourselves with that goal in mind of helping every student to understand mathematics. And that, that's why we use the, the, the slogan, every child can succeed in K-6 mathematics. So go to our website, um, see what we've got on offer, see if a membership is right for you. But that's it for this video. I look forward to talking to you again very soon. But for now, it's bye from me.